Hello, hi. This is this is a wild, wild stage, wildly lit. <laughs> um, glad that you all uh, were joining this uh, this call. Uh, my name is Karl Rabe. I'm an I run a small uh, startup. This is an OCP um, uh, startup, and as part of that, I'm happy to put in a talk on uh, quantum computing through one of my partners. Um, I'm very fascinated with the logo this year because it's oddly familiar. It looks like my wooden data center logo, and if I would be Nike, <laughs> I would sue. <laughs> okay, let's uh, jump into this. So, obviously, you know, um, I'm not doing this alone. So my main focus usually is on uh, decarbonizing infrastructure by building wooden data centers and wooden racks. Um, but one of my partners, who is an Who's, who's an expert for HPC infrastructure and large memory systems. And um, they have started virtualizing quantum computing. And I'll give a little insight as far as I've understood it <laughs> to how they are, they're, they're doing it. So going a little bit into what, what's the stage of quantum computing now, um, the, the fundamental background, um, the quantum basics, how they virtualize the quantum processor, and um, how we then are actually able to put together uh, through open technologies to build larger um, memory systems to create basically a larger qubit counts, larger virtualized qubit counts. So that's, that's the very nice Google chandelier, I think. Um, obviously, to scale those, to if you see um, any predictions on how they want to scale over the next five years into you know tenfold times in qubits, those only have to become bigger and more complex and more uh, more complicated and uh, um, and uh, noisy in the sense it's not the the noise that they make in operation, but the noise in, in signal. So there's an, a, a problem that's not really uh, being solved well, as far as understood. Uh, and each of those requires a drastically new facility. Um, and yeah, that is, it's a fascinating research area, but it's not very easy to solve. So quantum basics, uh, probably the one making the quantum jokes down here <laughs> is way better <laughs> equipped to do that. But uh, obviously, as you know, it's we are not talking about bits, we were talking about qubits, and for that, these uh, this, the, the, this, this is the theoretical basics of this, and we're talking about uh, deterministic Turing machines, and uh, or it's able to retract the quantum information. So, what is then really in terms of what what they're doing to really in terms of uh, virtual uh, quantum computing? So, they uh, take a set of Qubit RAM, as they call it, and that is where the superpositioning happening, and put that in a quantum register, and cycle that through their um, through 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 a vir virtualization uh, kernel, and over this process, obviously, on the right down there, you see initialization of it, but you also have to continuously measure that. Um, and you, you need rather high uh, AO, uh, IO to, to be able to um, process all the information. So the, the, the qubits itself then are virtualized on x86 hardware. To do that, um, you have to um, have to be able to connect via the PCB bus to other uh, sets of machines. Um, and this bus controller is something that they are really keen and were not even sharing with me a lot of information on, but that is basically where they are cycling through those, those informations. To increase the, the size of their qubits and the size of the whole machine, and that's, I think, is really tightly in integrating into all the discussions that we have. We had a massive CXL workshop 
Um, we see a lot of open um, development in the DC MHS space. We see composable memory systems, and the enabler for, for all of this is, is um, the CXL um, 1.1, 2.0, and potentially 3.0. And not only is this utilized on the CPU to CPU communication, but also CPU to GPU, CPU to numeric uh, programming, and also CPU to graphical quantum uh, processes unit. And so this is, if you want to imagine it in a, in a server, this is not only your tra traditional CPU, but they do also have an own processing unit that is specific to the quantum uh, interference, but it doesn't need to be cooled down, um, and it can run at yeah, usual data center temperatures. And the core unit for them to scale those qubit systems is really the uh, RAM size. So through enabling CXL, they can grow their RAM into uh, hundreds of terabytes. <coughs> if we then look into having the hardware layer solved through the CXL uh, layer, on top of that sits the virtualization of this memory with their neutral networks and the, their reg registers. Um, and obviously, they have put a lot of work into that, uh, into creating the, the necessary kernel extensions to run um, the CPU, GPU, and virtualized or, or cube, what is this, they called QM so, so quantum wise uh, processing unit. Um, and that is then, uh, it's, it's, it's running in a container environment that is, is then able to interf interface with, with, you know, with, the, with the standard tool like QuizKit. Um, so they use the basic open source programming language for that. Um, this is how they um, try and pulling it together. So from the cache and, and, and pushing it through the, 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 their so-called high performance assembly container, it is then uh, as accessible via an API. Um, accessing the shared memory and also their, the data processing unit to, to make those uh, virtualized quantum uh, computations. We um, put this forward right now, uh, which is interesting, solving a lot of problems for a lot of uh, companies here, which is based on a general server specification from uh, the OCP, utilizing uh, the DC MHS form factor motherboard. And you see that correctly, we flipped another board on top of it to create as much DIMM slots as possible. And we, we are, we are in, a, in a working stage trying to inc ever increase the RAM associated to one socket. Um, because not only the, the QAnver is profiting out of this, um, but also the uh, companies like in memory database operators like SAP, um, hosting companies who are offering ever larger virtualized um, VMs. They all, I think the, the record is now eight terabytes per virtual machine. This machine theoretically can hold 104 terabytes in memory. Um, and we're now trying to work out the thermals and also the, the, the electric supply. So we probably can it's more realistic in the region of 50 terabytes per one socket, but that is a drastically densification um, of, of those hardware solutions. Uh, and potentially, we hope to see via the CXL that we can go also from host to host, so they, that we create a rack level space of memory to um, go uh, above the 100 terabyte threshold to create, to keep up with the exponential curve of uh, qubit development to, you know, thousands and ten thousands and those kind of solutions. So watch out for that uh, specification, what we are actually uh, 
able to achieve. We work closely with, for example, JBL and the DCMHS group to, to make that happen. Um, and by using a standard form factor, obviously, all of a sudden, you're using your standard facility. Um, and creating rack scale, uh, rack scale memory system and then also rack row kind of systems will enable virtualized computing, which is now scheduled for them. Yeah. So, um, if you want to more, if you want to try this out, QMware has already a cloud platform to to test out those um, qu virtualized quantum computing. Um, their vision is to virtualize until it is, you know, financially feasible to have basically your you know, remember the mainframe that you were accessing and then you had a PCB, your, your PC for doing your compute. So to, to, to scale down the cost and until that they want to follow along with a virtualized uh, memory system um, and then just plug and play their, their virtual cloud to enable others to compute on, uh, on VMware. If you have any uh, desires to uh, dive dig deeper into uh, virtual uh, into sustainable infrastructure. Uh, happy to reach out to me um, and uh, or Wooden Data Center. So please, uh, yeah, please reach out and look out for the spec that is we want to put in. You know, by by the end of the year. Thanks. Thank you, Carl. Any questions from the floor? Just uh, looking at it, what you are showing here is a way of producing a quantum computer that is based on in a, in a data center. Are you considering any any model for distributed computing? I mean, different the interconnection of the models for them, or something that is in your mind, in your plans, or um, they are. Um, so, so what what QMV is doing in that regard is they 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 try to really be modular in the in the architecture to to be able to yeah integrate all of those developments that you uh, right now see on the quantum computer front really to be able to plug and play into all of those um, and f for them so to speak it makes the most sense to try and virtualize and not compete you know with the other uh, vendors mm. in the in the in the deep freeze space <laughs> space kind of but they uh, are claiming uh, that they can, you know, interact and integrate most of the existing uh, technologies. Yeah, yeah because, because something something that came to, came to my mind while you were while you, while you were making the presentation is, you know, that there is a serious issue about issues about how you can interconnect quantum computers and how you can replicate the, uh, quantum states uh, along. Uh, Great distances, etc. Uh, uh, so you mean like geo redundant? Yeah. Uh, what, yeah. What I mean, what I, what I mean is something that, for example, well, well, what we have right now with the internet or with the cloud. I mean, so in the, the idea that you have a distributed computers, you you send the computations, and then they are, the, the the workloads are shared for whatever the reason. I mean, that may, maybe just uh, because of uh, of uh, performance, of, or or simply because you want to keep a certain locality of data, whatever. Yeah. So. I'm thinking because for us, I mean, for the company I'm working in, and et cetera, it's quite interesting the model in which you can try to achieve this interconnection. And I think this model could have a, could have a, a role to play there. So, well, I'll, I'll look for you later on. I'm, I'm talking yeah, about feel free to reach out. I think, uh, I, I, I think still given the limitations or the enabling of CXL, we're still talking about relatively compact, you know, as compact as possible yeah, in terms yeah. of the connects that we need. Uh, but distributing and distributing everything is is, is the way forward in, in a sense. So it would be we should ha definitely have this discussion. Yeah. Okay. All right. Any other question? Yes. Yeah. Sorry that I, I came in a few minutes late. I I like to know uh, at what scale do you define uh, quantum? You know, quantum computing. You know. Like how many nodes or capacity that that you you know define quantum? Um, so, I th in my in my understanding, and also what 
basically what they're trying to keep up with is the, the qubit size of the of the processor. And and with the 100, I think the 100 terabyte system is about equal to 40 qubits. And um, so scaling out of one node on in, into a rack scale system of potentially, you know, uh, two petabytes uh, of, of, of quantum will, would increase that into the threefold uh, qubits. So that's the, the size. So that you're talking about uh, the computing uh, data size, not not a physical size of the of the data center that contain all these computing devices. Yeah, not no no no. This is more the the the, the, the basic aim is to to have more virtual qubits basically interact with each other. Yeah. Okay, fine. Thank you. Right. Any other questions? If not, thank you very much, Carl. Thank, thank you. you.